good and who is an entrepreneur? What is it that drives a guy who is comfortable in Shell and Chevron, Exxon Mobil, to say, I'm out? Person who sets up a business or businesses taking financial risks in the hope of profit. The entrepreneur has a very clear vision. You know exactly where you are going and how you want to get there. It's not just this vision that every person writes out. A very clear vision. When you wake up, you know exactly where you want to go. New ideas to the table, and you're able to demonstrate that. I believe there's a number of Nigerians who have deep pockets. I said what we inherited from the British system is to work in the labor force. We are not trained from the British system to be to build something, to create something. So if we can have that kind of curriculum in the schools, you start having people come out with the mind to build something. And that is the beginning of entrepreneurship. Do you lead train an entrepreneur? Of course you don't. Now an entrepreneur sniffs opportunities where value can be created. Remember that you can have two, two major uh, types of entrepreneurs. Those who sniff the opportunities and simply intend to make money quickly. And they're there. So they can cut corners, they can do whatever it takes, make money quickly and move on. There are even those like in the US that will build a business and once it has sufficient value, they sell and move on. Then there are those entrepreneurs that intend to build sustainable businesses. If you go into making soap, with five million naira you started your business. In the oil and gas industry, it's that five million naira you're going to pay a geologist for one year. That's the truth. So it's highly intelligent. So the money we're looking for, it's not money that you can get easily. So what I quickly learned was that you must make sure that the way you're structured, you are able to attract finance. If I give this guy money, will he run away with my money? And if he's going to run away with my money, how do I run from him? Governance. Governance, governance. Clear corporate governance, corporate structure, in such a way that those who are giving you money trust in that structure and governance that you use the money properly. And in any case, without governance. And all the examples I gave about banks, it is those that had governance from the beginning that are there today among the 22 out of the 126. If there is one thing that has come out, it's our inability to work as a team. Put in place the appropriate, appropriate governance structure to run the business, then you're fundamentally solving a lot of the relationship issues. I tell you that I have learned to fear and respect debt. I am so afraid of that. Oh boy, thank you. <laughs> so, I, I think once started, when he or she needs to be advised on debt or leverage, um, what would you tell the person? I know you, you, you claim that when you started, you wanted to start by using other people's money. There's a lot of lessons to learn when you are using OPM, other people's money. Um, you can make mistakes because you can always write it off. When you are in an entrepreneurial space, if you make a mistake, you are taken out. I think the first mistake is not understanding what debt is and what equity is. First, have you been able to borrow money with that money? They say, does he have the right protection? So your governance. You know, we keep talking about this governance, but it is so important. They want to make sure, if they give you a naira, they want to follow that naira and sit on it. They will even tell you that for the next 10 years, you will not take a dime out of this until we are paid up. So your governance must be in place. And I think the, the, the very last one I found with finances, and like you said, is they only give you money when you don't need it. But when they give you money, let me honestly tell you, you will not make money from their money. I think that's, that's one message I was going to give people today. When you have investors and financiers, and some of them are in the room, they don't expect you to be rich on their money. They expect you to deliver, pay them off, make their profits, 
they go away, and after that, you can make your money. So if you think you're going to raise money and make money from their money, it doesn't happen unless you and them are doing things which you should not be. There are two or three opportunities that I see in our industry which we probably need to all be looking at. I think one is gas. And everyone says, in NB Western, and Dr. Fatima and Abdul Zakro, gas is a hedge to all prices. Because once you have locked in your price and you're paying it, even when the oil price falls, your gas price holds. NB Western is a good example that even the space for growth, we are waiting for other marginal fields, or when Exxon says they want to divest, all of us are in there, all of us. And I think consolidation is going to happen in our industry among the indigenous. That want to grow majorly. For them to grow, it's going to be through consolidation. It can't just be organic. And I think that's also an area for some of the future smart young ones. Those smart young ones don't want to go to the well site and do the 30 years some of us have done. But they will bring what I'll call financial leverage to enable us to actually consolidate and get to the size. The, the population of this country is growing. The needs for these products are also growing. So um, there's certainly a very a big case you can make for either being the entrepreneur that invests in the midstream to make these products available or being the entrepreneur in the downstream to market uh, these products. Industry, the banking industry today, and I say this openly because it's public knowledge, Zenith Bank and GTB in the past five years at least, their balance sheets are similar. They report every year almost exactly the same profit, pay almost to the couple the same dividend, and yet GTB's share price is 50% higher than Zenith. There's only one reason. GTB has, over the past 12 years, gone through a very successful succession. Remember that you will take succession seriously. One of the key indices of success of a well-run company. If you don't manage succession, the company dies the day you leave. The next, authentic, the next wave of authentic entrepreneurs will be those who utilize hydrocarbon resources of this country for the benefit of its citizens. Those will be people who are going to have sustainable businesses over the long term. Because this, com this country truly has a big shortage of energy requirements.